You're in the C-Space studio. I'm James Kotecki here with Jonathan Nelson. He's the CEO of Omnicom Digital. Uh, welcome to the C-Space studio, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. Um, so you are a major advertising and media holding company. You have a great kind of macro view, I suppose, on the media and marketing and branding space. Um, how do you see yourself fitting into the whole ecosystem of what's going on here at CES and C-Space? Well, at Omnicom Digital, we are on the buy side of the media, so we represent our clients. We've got about 5,000 clients across 250 individual companies. I run the digital side of that, so a lot of uh, CS fits into what we're doing because obviously the world is going digital and we're going with it. So. What are some of the trends or ideas that are percolating in your brain here as we, as we sit at the cusp of 2017? I think there's a number of very, very big ideas. I mean, not only is it about hardware, I mean, we're seeing, of course, larger, bigger, cheaper television sets, more handsets for mobile things, you know, the hardware side of it, but the software side of this is getting very, very interesting. We're seeing machine learning, which is really an ingredient. It's hard to see it, but it's being built into almost everything in our, in our world. And a big component of what's powering machine learning is data. So working with the data to try to to get smarter about putting the right stuff in front of the right people at the right time. Machine learning is uh, almost a term that you know many people could slap on whatever they're doing. I'm curious how you define it and what the work that you do. Well, I think the whole idea is that we're getting smarter. I mean, machine learning, you're right. It can be defined so many different ways. It's kind of, it, it, it's getting misused in many regards, but the, the bigger idea is that we're learning and getting smarter and this is getting automated. So as programmatic moves even further to the forefront, as data, is the exhaust of everything. We're taking the data, figuring out how to get smarter, and then applying it through programmatic to buy faster, better, uh, more on point, more efficiently. Let's talk about some of those smarter applications that are available now that, that weren't available until recently. Sure, so we, we are looking at how do we find an audience, first of all, within the audience, how do we message them, what is the most effective communication tool, and then how do we move them uh, gently, subtly, uh, very concerned about privacy, but moving them towards the purchase and the post-purchase experience. Machine learning is, is basically optimizing constantly and figuring out how to do that more effectively. Uh, what it seems to be describing is you're describing a marketing funnel, but I know that you yeah. actually believe that there's a different way of looking at that now. Well, the marketing, I mean, it used to be that sales and marketing were, I always joke that sales and marketing were the same department on consecutive floors but not connected by a stairway. What, what digital is really doing is connecting the messaging to the purchase experience and then connecting it to the post-purchase experience and then hopefully trying to create a feedback loop. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting when you have something like, say, Amazon, which you can market purchase and post-purchase all in the same ecosystem we're just doing that literally millions of times a minute. Um, how much smarter uh, can I expect, how much smarter should we expect things to get and how much smarter do we need to get? Are we, are we still kind of taking baby steps here? Yeah, oh we are absolutely in the early innings of this game. Um, you know these are, technology is really combinatorial, it is software builds on itself, we're standing on the shoulders of the last generation. Things like machine learning, we really haven't seen anything yet. I mean, we are infants when it comes to this art. Uh, so can you paint a picture for me of the, the, the consumer of a few years from now, how they are actually interacting with uh, what you're talking about? How does it play out in their Hard daylight? to say on a timeline, but well within our lifetimes, for instance, I think you will see very little media uh, at least on, a, on a, a near field level. I'm not talking about outdoor or you know, kind of generalized broadcast media. I'm talking about specific. It will be very, very highly tailored. Mm -hmm. It will be connected to commerce. It will be connected to social. It will be generally of interest to you and in many cases tailored very specifically to you as an individual. And of course, it will be video, much more immersive, much more engaging. You know, the, just generally better on target. So is it safe to say that the future is like a, a general shedding of the things I don't care about? And only I getting... would love it to be that. <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah. I think that advertisers spend a huge amount of money uh, on waste. 
targeting people that will never buy their products or uh, messaging people that are halfway through the purchase funnel as if they were just seeing the product for the first time. You know, we need to get way smarter about exactly what a consumer wants. Um, can we talk about how this all plays out, specifically in areas of e-commerce as well? I know this is an issue that you guys uh, deal with very, very closely. A huge amount of time, yeah. So on, when the, on the e-commerce front, like, what's the relationship between how e-commerce is developing and how all these other digital trends are developing? You mentioned technology is combinatorial. Um, I imagine it's a more seamless e-commerce purchasing experience for me. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, these things, like I said, it used to be that sales and marketing were not really connected, yet clearly people were marketing to try to lead to sales. It was because the media that carried those things was disconnected. Well, now they're, the media itself is connected. You know, whether it's Facebook or Google or Amazon or you know, thousands of other startups, the, the idea is the same, that brands are building brands in order to sell product uh, and the, the media is capable of doing that. So that's exactly what we are relentlessly focused on is connecting the message to the purchase, to the post-purchase, it's all the same thing. I'm curious how this looks uh, from inside your company and how you guys actually go about trying to, to grasp this feature and also to build on it. Um, what, sure. are the, what are the new challenges that you guys have internally as a company or with your clients that you work closely with to actually get this stuff done? So about five or six years ago, we founded a group called Analect. Analect is the analytics group within Omnicom. It initially started more on the media side, but is now going underneath everything from PR to direct marketing to classical creative and of course, media, Analect sits underneath everything. What it is, is a giant data engine. We put it in there trying to figure out, okay, consumers, what platforms are they on? What devices are they using? What is their interest? Where are they in their life stages? And then trying to, once again, craft the right messaging. The, the, the complex thing about this, Omnicom's got over 80,000 employees on a global basis doing this in 110 different countries. So the challenge is doing this in Chinese, in English, uh, across all these different devices, across all these different life stages. I mean, it's there's oftentimes 60 companies working for really large clients of ours. So getting them all synced up, getting the data to work, getting the actual crystalline message effective and focused, it's pretty tricky stuff. Doing such detailed work on that level, I assume, requires you to work really, really closely with your clients and to kind of yeah. be, be right inside their business in many different ways. Yeah. So is, is there an increasing kind of permeable barrier between when the client ends and when Omnicom begins? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've worked, I mean, most marketers have sat inside mm -hmm. of their clients pretty but is that, very, I wonder, very is, that, is, that, is there something new about the degree to which technology and data and the difficulty of what you're doing requires this, this synergy? I would say that the trust level has always been there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they trust us with billions of their dollars, mm -hmm. but the what we do, you know, dealing with personal information, dealing with sales numbers, dealing with communication, native content, which denotes editorial and the public facing, you know, real time face of a company, you know, it takes a very, very high level of trust. Fortunately, the trust has been there. I mean, we are, deeply embedded in our clients, and our clients are deeply invested in us. So, it um, just, we've changed, we've evolved. I know you started that analytic group five or six years ago, but if I could go back in time five years and tell you everything that you've just told me in this interview, are you surprised <laughs> where we are right now? Uh, I'm always amazed at the moment things happen, but it's interesting. I've been doing this a really, really long time. Um, my first CS was in 1984. Uh, it's easier to predict the future when you're kind of rolling around in the middle of the present. Um, so I'm not, you know, things like machine learning, of course, that's really quite obvious. Um, you know, that Facebook will implement it in a certain way and Google will implement it a different way. Amazon's doing what they're doing. The way they do it, I, I really have quite an appreciation for the craft. And, you know, these people are masters at what they do, as are, you know, many of our people and many of our competitors. Um, do you see, you mentioned that you have 80,000 people, you know, we talk about machine learning and data-driven uh, things like that. I mean, does it, does it take fewer people or actually more people in the future to actually get this work done? That's a very, very good question. I think that it takes 
a, well, it, cha it changes the mix is what really happens. I mean, in some cases it takes fewer people that are more uh, PhD types. Um, in other cases, look, there's got it. There's a lot of people that have to move all this stuff through clients. I mean, in, for our sophisticated clients, we're launching hundreds if not thousands of pieces of content daily on a global basis, and that takes tens of thousands of people to do that. And where does creativity, human creativity, fit into all of this? Oh, I am, I think it's interesting. I've watched the pendulum swing over towards the media folks and the data folks. I mean, people that couldn't get the, themselves arrested like you know five, 10 years ago are now the bell of the ball. Interestingly, it's swung away from creativity, though it's a different kind of creativity what the analysts and the data jockeys are doing. I think it's gonna swing back. The differentiation is really in the craft of the message. And it's the art and the science of this combined that really makes it work. So I think the pendulum is gonna fully swing back to creativity. And I wonder if we're in a situation where everybody's trying to get the best technology, everybody's trying to get the best data. At the end of the day, it's that, almost that last mile of creativity that makes the difference because it's, it's so hard to compete. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, you could have the best targeting scheme, the most efficient commerce system, the best technology. Look, if you don't have a good message to put on top of it, it will not work. And that is just proven time and time again. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Final thoughts uh, before we let you go. You know, it, uh, I'm very much looking to get out on the floor to see everything that's been happening here. It's been a very, very busy CS. Very much looking forward to 2017 and, and all of the great things that are coming here. All right, Jonathan Great. Nelson, Omnicom Digital, thanks so much for joining me and talking about the future. Thanks for having me. I'm James Kotecki. Keep it locked right here for more great C-Space Studio content.